Today, we're coloring Color Match inside of On One Photo Raw 2026. Now, this is one of the newer tools in one of the later versions of On One. So, if you have an older version of On One Photo Raw, you may or may not have this tool inside of it. So, here we are with our image inside of Photo Raw 2026. Now, if I hold down the backslash key, you can see this is the raw image, and this is after I've applied some Brilliance AI. And my recommendation is you always get your base tones correct first, and even your base color correct first. After that, you can jump over to the effects tab, and you can see I already have match color added in on this particular image, but if you click add filter, and then if you come over to the creative section, it's gonna be the fourth option down. Now, you're probably wondering, well, Chris, when should I apply the color match filter to my image? And my recommendation is immediately following your develop module, especially if you don't want to do more to the image than just adding a simple color grade, because that's ultimately what this tool is doing for the image. So now that we know when to apply it, let's go ahead and take a look at the tool itself. So we're gonna activate it, and you'll notice that I now have these three options, opacity and styles, which is a very common thread in all filters inside of ON1. However, what I will say, the styles inside of here are actually pretty helpful with just toning the image overall and getting an idea of where you may want to go. And these come built in to on one foot of raw. Now I'm going to reset this so that way we're looking at the toned image that we created already. And I'm going to click on the color match to expand the more robust tools. Now inside of here, you'll notice that we have a drop down that says reference. And I want to show you what happens when this reference image gets loaded. Right now, we don't have a reference image added. So if I click one of these presets, I'm going to click Medusa. And so you'll notice I now get a referenced image that On One is using to tone and apply the color and the luminosity values to our selected photo. Now, this actually doesn't look terrible. And you know, you could go along with that. Now, as I click through all of these presets, you'll notice that that reference image changes. But let's say you don't like any of those reference images that on one is given us inside of the styles. You can come over here to this reference oval, hit the drop down, and you can then come all the way to the bottom and click load file. You likely will not have all of these images that are in here. Um, when you start off, because these are just previous photos that I have applied to an image in the, in the past. But if I click load file, it's going to give you your file browsing module and you can use any image. I want to make note that you can use raw format images. So ARW, NEF, CR3, whatever it may be that your camera has, DNGs, um, but I'm going to come over here and take a look at some JPEGs. So that's inside of my tutorial images. And I have a folder inside of Pexels because all of these images that are in this folder, I'm making available to you. You can download them using the link in the description box below. If I select any of these images, so I'm just going to go ahead and select this one right here and hit open. It's going to read it and then it's going to apply it to the overall image. So now we have our reference image applied. And before we dive into the sliders underneath, if you're finding value in today's video, go ahead and smash the like button. And don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the sliders. You have color, luminosity, contrast and saturation. Now all of these sliders are in reference to your referenced image in the match color filter. It's not referencing any of the colors that you may or may not have applied using other tools inside of On One. These sliders are directly tied to this image right here, but more so, it's your instructions to On One of what to do with this image's information in regards to your image. So, if you want 100% of the color from the reference image, then you pull this up to 100%.
If you don't want any of the color from your reference image, then you pull this down to 0%. In all of the other sliders, they work in the exact same way. So you really find a balance of how this particular slider will work for you. So if I pull the color down because maybe I just don't care for the color overall, that was in the reference image, but I like the luminosity, just not a whole lot, so I can pull that down. Now, when I look at the image, I realize that I'm losing some contrast because the reference image is brighter than my initial image. If I turn this off, you can see the image is dark, and then if I turn it back on, it's a little bit brighter. Well, maybe I'm losing some of that contrast in the photo, and so that's where this contrast slider comes in handy. I can pull it to the right to include contrast in my image, and I can pull it to the left to remove contrast. Now, for me, I think that this image, it needs some more contrast, and the only reason why I had to pull this so far is because, remember, I pulled the luminosity slider down. So, if I pull the luminosity slider up, the contrast, it has more effect the closer I get to 100%, you can see how that contrast slider is really working. But as I pull the luminosity slider down, well, that contrast slider is not going to have as much of an effect as it could. So the next thing is saturation. And typically when you work with contrast and luminosity, you may or may not have enough saturation. And this is really just that adjustment to figure out how much saturation do I really need? But that's tied to this color slider. So because I'm using the initial color in the image, notice that the saturation slider, it's not really doing anything, right? I should be looking at a black and white photo here because I pulled the saturation all the way down. But remember, because I have the color pulled all the way down from the reference image, I'm telling on one, don't use any of the color from this image, in which case the saturation slider has no information to work with. But as I pull up on the color information, notice how I now start to get a black and white photo. And then of course, I can blend the saturation however I need to and vice versa, all right? So that's what the saturation slider does. Now, for your image, you will have to fine tune this to figure out what makes the most sense when you're applying this in your photography. This is just a really quick way of grabbing colors from an image or luminosity values from an image and then applying it to your own photos. If you found value, smash the like button. If you got questions, leave it in the comment section below. If you want to pick up Photo Raw 2026 and save some money, consider using the coupon code down in the description box. That is an affiliate coupon code and affiliate link, which just means that if you use it, I make a small commission, but it's at no extra charge to you. It's a win-win for everyone involved. Until next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.